it's your Mellish here, and you're now watching New Orleans TV. As far as your city, do you feel like artists in your city are like support one another? <laughs> Hell no, dog. I don't feel like the artists support another, each other out here enough, you hear me? Or at all, really and truly. Like, I can speak for myself and say I do, but like, they got a lot of artists that's not gonna support you due to the fact that they feel like you're better than them or because they feel like you got more going on than them, you hear me? Or they just, you know, it's self-guilt where they just know they could be doing more, you hear me? Like, it's a, it's a real crab uh, in a bucket type city, you hear me? Tell everybody where you're from. I'm from Isle Grove, man, 17. Breeding grounds, you hear me? Okay. So when did you start making music? Man, I've been, I've been doing music my whole life, like, since I was two. I wasn't rapping and shit, but I, you know, I was playing instruments and playing drums and all that. Been making money from it and shit, you hear me? Trying to get out there. Okay. Um, so what's the average day like for you? Average day? A lot. I wake up 4 o'clock in the morning and go to rolling fatties, you hear me? And I roll fatties and all that, you hear me, till about 2, 3 o'clock. Uh, then that is music and shit from that, from all, pretty much. Music and rolling fatties. Also, do you have any projects coming up? Projects. I got um, I got parental advisory. That's gonna be coming out soon. You hear me? It's gonna be hosted by Sauce Walker. Other than that, I got um, Snakes and Ladders. That's gonna come out towards the end of the year. You hear me? Y'all gonna fuck with that. Um, so where do you see music career going in like three years from now? Mm. Three years. Wow. I ain't gonna lie, in three years, I won't be all the way established here. We're gonna have that partnership. We can be already laced up. Like, that's, you know, that's where they gotta be three years from now. If, if you know, it ain't done in three years, I ain't even gonna lie. Like, who we doing this for? We don't got forever. Okay. I'm sorry, are you signed to anyone? Nah. I ain't signing to nobody, you hear me? You know, we got Wake and Big ENT. But at the end of the day, that's just, you know, our full front. Um, who is we? It's me and my twin venture. We started this shit up. Everything started from just a design, you hear me? We turned to a clothing line after that, and after that, that's what we had now. We can be clothing at E and T, you hear me? Mixtapes that you dropped so far? Oh, I, I, I ain't dropped no mixtapes. I just be dropping singles, and I dropped the album called Up October 23rd of last year. Y'all go fuck with that, it's everywhere. iTunes, Spotify, Tidal, all that. And I got Buku videos on YouTube. Just drop Lamb featuring Vinci. That bitch doing right here, you know I man. Y'all go fuck with that. Okay, so growing up, I'm like, who influenced you for us time to start making music? Influence, like, let's put it like this. Like, my whole family, like, we, uh, you know, we music oriented. Like, ever since young, like I said, like, my, uh, I was, you know, playing drums, African drums and shit. Yeah, my grandma, she got a, uh, a band called Bamboo the 2000, they perform worldwide, all that, you know, and she exposed us to a lot, you know, so seeing that growing up made me want to do a lot, especially knowing that you could turn that into something, you know, what I mean? it's like, why not? Kept our hand in the pot, you know, the whole life, you know, what I mean? um, so what's your most um, memorable concert performance that you had, and I'm telling people why. Yeah, let me see. I could say, I could say it was at a, uh, I can't even remember which show it was. I probably had like five people in the audience, you hear me? No, no, I, this is the most memorable. I think this was on my birthday with my, my you know, my twin venture, you hear me? It was at the Willow, and we in that bitch performing lamb. And when I tell you they had a nigga come all the way from the back of the, from the bar, you hear me? Ball was bucking harder than a bitch. You'll never know what was going on. That ball, think that ball was about to fight or something. You hear me? Ball came, oh hot shit! I'm fucking with that. You hear me? Like, like dude was bucking so hard, son. Like you would have thought that was his favorite song in the world. You hear me? And that was on our birthday, dog. Nigga had my twin perform with me, so at the end of the day, that shit meant a lot. You hear me? Other than the currency um performance, you know, for the 420 party, that was it. You hear me? Like. Nigga wanna have some way bigger, better moments than them, you hear me? But fuck, that's the most memorable right now. Okay. 
Do you feel like you have to move out your city? I'm like, once your music career, I'm like, reach a certain milestone? Yeah. You definitely have to move out your city. Um, that's one thing about the rap game, like, when you in your own city doing what you need to do and what you want to do, like, and trying to, you know, build up the fans and all that, people not going to appreciate what you got going on until other people appreciate it, you hear me? For some reason, that's just how it is. And once you do make that stamp, best believe they're going to have people that's going to try to erase that and they're going to erase you. So, like, you got to, you know, you got to leave, you got to migrate. Go to uh, bigger and better things, you hear me? Oh, so what do you feel like is the best song that you have released so far? And I'm telling people why. The best song I got released? I got, uh, let's put it like this. Fast, Fast and Furious, you hear me? That was like the most, I guess, uh, most personal song or some shit that's out right now. Like, you know, all, everything I rap is real life, you hear me? But it's like that song or whatever, like, you know, uh, my, my cousin went to jail and pretty much that's, that was me, you know, pretty much just saying what's going on in my life at the time, you hear me? Like how, you know, how I deal with things or whatever the case is, you hear me? And a lot of people, you know, reacted to it in a good way. I got, I got a lot of good feedback from that song. I still get to this day, you hear me? Okay. So tell your fans um, and some about you um, that you don't show on your social media. <laughs> that's a hard one. That's a, I, don't, I don't like sharing shit. Um, damn, I don't even know on that one right there. You hear me? Okay. <laughs> so, for as your city, do you feel like local DJs and radio um, could do a better job of breaking the artist's music? Um, in my opinion, the DJs. It depends on what DJs you're talking about or whatever the case is, but like they got certain DJs, they do what they gotta do to, you know, at least try, you hear me? A lot of them, you know, they're gonna turn that blind eye in the radio stations, they completely don't give a fuck. Like, and that's, if nobody else said it before, I know Google people spoke on it or whatever, but if y'all don't hear it, y'all need to hear it from me, I know y'all don't give a fuck, you hear me? Like, y'all need to sit here and definitely do a way better job, a way better job, cause like, everybody, not from New Orleans, blowing up off of our shit. Well, they're not blowing up, but they utilizing our shit and, you know, and making a bag off of it, man. Like, y'all supposed to, you know, help us out, the locals out at least, and make sure that, you know, we keep it in the city, keep our sound to be our sound. Like, back in the G in the 90s and shit like that, Hot Boys, Cash Money, all that, you know, Master P and everybody, they kept that shit locked down or whatever, as in what the sound was for the city. And y'all was pushing this shit probably, you hear me? But at the end of the day, nowadays is, you rarely hear a local, you hear me? Like y'all probably got that, you know, a few segments with Sheba or whatever, you hear me? But other than that, like, I don't be hearing about nothing on the radio. I don't even listen to the radio because of that. And I'll just let, leave it at that, you hear me? Okay, um, so what do you enjoy most about being in the music industry? And also what do you hate most about being in the music industry? Man, enjoy. I guess I enjoy uh, letting people really hear, you know, like let's put it like this, I guess like you already asked me about, you know, there's certain shit that I don't show on so social media and stuff like that, like if you listen to my music, like you gonna know what's not out there, you hear me, as in what's not on social media and what's not being talked about out of nigga mouth, you hear me, because at the end of the day, through my music, that's the only way I can sit here and let some certain shit go or whatever, you know. And, and, I, and I, I enjoy doing that because that means you gotta actually listen to the music if you really wanna know about a nigga, you hear me? And what I hate about this shit, we talked about this, that was, I think that was what the first question, you hear me? Like, how people just, you know, just don't support, you hear me? That's, that's the only thing right there. And not the consumer, mainly it's just other artists and all that type of shit. People feel like, oh, you know, if I, you know, do something with this person or even help him, you know, with a little or something or whatever, it's not going to benefit me nothing. You're going to get your good energy, you hear me? Your time going to come. It's all about just making sure that you do what you got to do and move right out your, you hear me? That's all it is to it. But what advice do you have 
for my younger artists, I'm just trying to follow on making your footsteps. Stay consistent. Be persistent. That's another one, you hear me? Like, one thing you don't want to hear is no. That's one thing that you shouldn't accept at that, you hear me? When it comes to moving forward with this and what people feel like you can and cannot do in this industry. Like, and the last thing I'll say for advice, make sure you stack your bread and have a plan. Stack your bread and have a plan, and I promise you, I promise you, bro, it can't go wrong. If you could date anybody in the music industry, um, who would it be and tell the people why? If I could date anybody in the music industry? In the music industry? Yeah. This is a funny one because I don't be caring about none of them type of people, like, to be honest, but it's like, if I had to, Damn, this is hard, because I'm not even a, like somebody that just want clout from another person. Like, I don't even know, you hear me? Like, like damn. So Mariah Carey used to be my bitch, but she all toe up now, you hear me? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I got a funny question for you. Have you ever been catfished? Ooh, fucking right, dog. Saying, dog, y'all hoes down bad, son. Like, nigga definitely got catfished before, you hear me? That shit was not cool, dog. Like, and then the person really thought that a nigga wouldn't find out, you hear me? Like, it was this big, fat bitch, son. Like, I, look, everybody need love, you hear me? I ain't even calling out y'all, you know, the fat girls, but, you know, that's just who was a part of the situation, you hear me? She, she did that wrong, you hear me? She did that wrong. <laughs> oh, man. So, on the, on the average, how many hours do you spend on, like, in the studio? Man, let's put it like this. Like in the past two months or something like that, I haven't even been in the studio like talking about it. But before that, like I'm, I'm used to that probably like four, or five hours type shit. You hear me? At a time, like you know, I can pretty much get a song knocked out in a half an hour, hour if I, you know, if I'm really feeling like it. So fuck. Shout out to that boy Ross, and he be you know putting that first class miss on shit. You hear me? Like what is the weirdest? Or funniest question that you ever asked during one interview? Uh. If you had one, you ain't gotta ask it. No, look, I, I don't know. I'm trying to think. I'm, I don't want to lie either, but nah, I don't, I don't remember one. I don't remember uh, like, like a super absurd question or nothing. Okay. So if you wasn't doing music, I'm like, what do you think you'll be doing? Oh, I know what I'll be doing. The type of money I done spent in this music industry already, dog, like trying to at least get my name out there, you know, and pushing my music and whatever the case is, I could have bought some houses by now. <laughs> real estate would have been where I'm at, you hear me? Like real shit. And on last night, you tell everybody where to find you and also where to find your music. Y'all can find me on YouTube, y'all can find me on every streaming site that's available, you hear me? Like all the major ones, let's put it like that. Album Music, Spotify, Tyler, and I know they got 150 plus more you can go find me. Like, you know, just keep searching. I got videos everywhere. I got buku shit more dropping, you hear me? So at the end of the day, if y'all feel like checking me out, just search me up. Jamelis, G-E-M-E-L-L-U-S, you hear me? Everywhere.